Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is my CNC mill. I did a conversion a little while back on this, and I had one major problem. For my first project, I wanted to make it so that I could actually see what I'm doing underneath this head, because it creates a shadow underneath here, and it's really hard to see, you know, if you scribe a line on something, and you're zeroing, whatever, it's just kind of hard to see what you're doing. So, I'm going to take some LEDs, some electronics, some metal, put them together, and make a ring light for this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's look at some of the components that we're going to be using. Uh, this is the PCB that I got off eBay. This was about 10 bucks for a two-pack, so I actually have two of these. And you can see it's aluminum backed, has a nice aluminum plating on the back of it. This whole thing's about 1.5 millimeters thick. You've got 12 LEDs around. These can fit either the 1 watt or the 3 watt size. They're pretty much the same. And we also have a few mounting holes along here, and then you can see right there we have the positive and the negative for connecting the wires. So that is our LED ring. Unfortunately, it's a little too skinny here in the middle, so we're going to need to machine that out to fit around the spindle, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Here are the LEDs. We have 12. These are 6,000 to 6,500K temperature LEDs. These are all 3 watt and they will fit nicely on that PCB. So I have 12 of those. These are about 7 bucks from the same seller, so this whole thing together shipped was about 17 bucks. For the power supply, this came from a different seller on eBay, and this is a waterproof LED driver. This, I think, is a 50 watt driver, so it should easily handle the 12 3 watt LEDs that are going to be on there. And you can see on this side, we just have the wires for the um, AC end of it. So you just have AC come in here. We have a little dimmer module there. Um, there's just a 10K pot inside of here. I actually might replace it with something else because I don't like this big box, but I might do some with that later. And then we have these two wires which connect directly to the LED. And this is a nice, actually kind of heavy duty enclosure. It's all potted on the back as you can see. And this will mount nicely inside the controller box or whatever. So those are the three components. Um, this guy was like $27 I think shipped. So $17.27, that's like what $44. Um, plus the cost of the material that we're going to be using. I expect to come in around $60 or $70 for this whole light. And these LEDs, I think, are specced at around 200 lumens a piece, 180, 200 lumens when driven properly with this guy. So 12 of those. So we're going to see somewhere around 2,400 lumens out of this whole setup, which should be plenty for the ring light. Here is where I plan to attach the ring light. I'm going to attach it to um, this little nub on the bottom of the spindle right there. Um, when I go over to the belt drive, I'm actually not going to have use of the quill anymore, so it'll be locked up directly against the underneath side of the head. And ideally, I want the bottom of the PCB to kind of be flush with the bottom of the spindle so I don't get any shadows on the actual rotating part of the spindle. Just so you can see what's going on here. The inner diameter of this is like 86 and a half. And this guy is right at 90 millimeters. So we just need to take, yeah, like one and a half or so off of that. And I'm going to do 90 and a half on the inside just so we have a little bit of wiggle room and adjustment room. So let me zero this tool off and load the code. I have the ring set up here on the mill. Uh, I've got a couple one, two, three blocks, a couple clamps. Ideally I'd like to clamp these edges down, but I'm just going to be milling maybe a millimeter out here in the inner circle, so I don't really care that much. It might chatter a little bit. Um, I've got my arm with my dial test indicator mounted here. Um, unfortunately the inside of this is not very smooth, so when I spin this around it fluctuates all over the place, but this isn't that big of a deal. So if you see I've got zeroed out here. I can move it around and you can see it pretty much maintains at zero. It flitters around a little bit. 
So that means that the spindle is roughly centered with the inner ring. So I'm going to mount a end mill on here and I'm just going to shave off the one or two millimeters that I need. Got the quill moved down a little bit so you can see, and it's like a tiny bit of play, which is exactly what I wanted, and so it'll mount just like that. Now that the PCB <clears throat> is trimmed down, we have to attach the LEDs. Um, I've got some of this thermal tape from SparkFun. This is um, product 9771. And this is basically just double stick tape um, that is used for sticking thermal components together. Um, the middle pad here that you see for the LEDs is actually not a solder pad. This is a thermal transmissive pad. Um, it's just made to take the heat away from the LED down to the aluminum heat sink. This will be mad at something and that will transfer the heat away. So you're not really meant to solder this to the LED. You can reflow these if you want, but I'm gonna use the thermal tape. It'll be a little bit easier to do it either anyway. So I'm um, going to cut this up, put the pads on there, put the LEDs, solder it all together, and then hopefully we can test this out soon. I'm going to just put one of these on there. It has a little quick disconnect on the back, and I'm going to attach that to the ends of the wires, make it a little easier, and I also have the um, male versions of it somewhere around here, so make it nice and quick to take on and off. Okay, everything's hooked up. We've got a power cord plugged in. There's my knob. I'm going to plug in the power cord. There it goes. Takes a second. Kind of odd. Pretty darn bright. Let me adjust this pot here. There we go. So that apparently is the minimum. You can see there. And that's the brightest, which is extremely bright. I've got a really crude setup right now. I've just got some gaffer's tape kind of holding it to the spindle, and I've got the spindle down just to show what's going on. And this is on the lowest. You can see it's actually pretty good light coming off of it. Um, normally this is really dark because the head um, obscures the light from above. Um, so if I turn it up, you can see. Um, I'm going to set the camera exposure to manual so that we can get a difference of what it looks like on and off. Okay, so this is just a one, two, three block sitting on the table. Ring light um, is up here so it doesn't get very warm. And um, this is with everything off. So I've adjusted the camera so that we're on completely manual, um, bumped the ISO down. So this is what things look like in the shop without any additional lighting. And you can see it's very dark underneath here. You can't really see a whole lot. So I'm gonna plug in the light and that is on full. 
you can see that it's very bright. There's plenty of light coming under here. The whole surface is completely illuminated. And if we turn it down to low, hate this knob. There we go. So that's low. You can see it's a lot better than it was when it was off. There's a little bit of illumination here, and then we can crank it up, and that's what it looks like on full. Now that I know the light will be bright enough and it works well with the mill, it was time to make something that would actually fit it onto the spindle. So I made this aluminum bracket that would hold the PCB onto the spindle. And you can see here that it's just a um, really simple holder that just kind of um, PCB slaps into, is screwed down, and there's a little lens on the top that they just um, laser cut out of acrylic um, that just, you know, keeps some of the stuff from splashing on it. And it has this um, little set screw that you screw down from the back side and it presses up against the spindle and it holds it in place. And the whole thing is pretty much press fit, so that's really all I needed to get it to um, fit pretty snugly on the head. And it's nice and clean, fits on there, doesn't hang over the sides at all, and you can barely even tell it's there. Now the holder proved to be a little bit tricky to machine. It turns out that um, I had some issues with the mill, my motor was kind of acting up a little bit, but just a lot of operations and a lot of machining, and it was really pretty amazing to see how much material really came out of this um, hunk of aluminum here. And ultimately it was, um, you know, one bit just for the majority of the material removal. Um, towards the end I did a finishing pass, which you can see coming up here. And then it was just a matter of uh, drilling out the holes, tapping them, and then setting the PCB in and the lens and the standoffs, and then just uh, mounting it to the mill. So pretty easy. Nothing a whole lot to this one. And here is the finished product. As you can see, it looks a lot like the SolidWorks drawing, which is good. The only issue I had, as you can see, there's two holes, two sets of holes all across the back. I broke a tap in there, so I had to shift the whole pattern a little bit, but other than that, it worked out fine. We've got a little plexiglass um, screen on there. I think it's um, acrylic that I just laser cut. And this whole thing fits under, just like that. I've got the wires running through the head, down through the cable track, and out the back. And eventually when I get around to making the controller for this whole thing, I'll have the knob and on-off switch mounted like on the controller outside the mill. Uh, but for right now, it's just kind of mounted on the side of the column. So here is the 2400 lumen ring light.